Good morning, children. Today, we will speak about Jesus' return. If Jesus returns, would you be ready for him? We have a number of, of, of pictures. And the first one here, we have a man asking his friend, are you ready for Jesus' return? This, this friend here, he's like, what are you talking about? Doesn't even think that there is such thing as Jesus return. Now, the second picture here, Jesus uses illustration of plant and family, families and even fishes. So as you can see these three pictures, the first one is plant and the second a family, pictures a picture of family and the third is a picture of three fishes. So he used this kind of thing so we can understand. Uh, in the Bible, we do have a lot of scriptures with uh, stories that speaks about our daily life. So in order to understand uh, what is said, he uses this kind of illustration. Jesus used a parable of right and wrong. This we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 25 to 51. We have two types of people here. On the left, we have a beggar on the floor trying to reach to this man asking for money. Now this man is full of himself. He doesn't even look at him. He's just boasting, you know, he doesn't care. This is not right. It is wrong. We don't supposed to treat people like this. On the right side, we have another uh, two people, it's a man taking care of his friend. I think he's washing his feet. And this man actually, he's doing something good. He's taking care of him. And this is the right thing he's doing. So as you can see here on the back side, there is a picture of a master. A master looking at what these people are doing. Our story, remember? are telling us about how we're supposed to behave, how we're supposed to get ready to be prepared for Jesus' return. So the master here is seeing who is doing right and who is doing wrong, because actually when Jesus returns, he will judge about everyone what they did in this life. Those who did wrong, then they, they will have punishment and those who who behaved in the right way, they will have blessing, blessings and God will take care of them. Now, a parable of the 10 virgins is written in the book of Matthew 25, one to 13. This parable tells us about 10 virgins. They were waiting for a bridegroom and five of them had, had their bottles, their bottles of oil full, and they, 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 they had light still burning all the time they were there waiting for the bridegroom. And the other, the half of the team, uh, they had their oil as well, but their lamp ran out and they had to run away to, to search for, for people who are selling oil. They went to shops and, and they, they had to go and get the oil before the master or the bridegroom come. So the one who remained, they, they just kept on waiting, being patient, and just, they were watchful and patient. So when the bridegroom turned up, the others were still at the shops. So he had to tell the, the one who were waiting for him to come in the house. And then he had to shut the door behind them. The other girls, when they turned up, they come around, they found that the others were already gone. So they, they were like disappointed. They didn't, they didn't really uh, find it much helpful because they, they were also, they wanted to go and see the bridegroom, but unfortunately they were not prepared as such. And this story here is telling us that we supposed to be ready all the time. We supposed to have everything we need this is the word of God. We're supposed to get ready for the master, for Jesus' return, 
waiting for him and watchful and also patient and always prepared, not being distracted or running away. That's why this bridegroom, when he came in, he had to find the girls and let them in. The next bit is telling about, is this is a parable of willing and unwilling servants. And this is in Matthew chapter 25 from 14 to 30. So these are three people. So when the Lord came around, he gave them a mission. He gave them uh, one, the first one, he gave him one pound. The second, he gave him two pound. And the third, he gave him four pounds. So as he was leaving to go away, he told them, use the money uh, uh, until I come back. I, I will, I will, you have to give me back the money. So he went. When he went, the two, the two people started to use the money properly so that they can have more money from the money the master gave them. But the third person, he thought, oh, with this one pound, I don't think I should, I should use it. This man, if he comes back, he'll be angry. Let me go and hide it under the soil. So when he comes back, I will have his money to give him. So he took it and had to hide it away. And the other people, they took the money and used it and produced more and more uh, of, 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 of a lot of money indeed. So when the master returned, he, he saw those two people, they were really doing their job. They had a lot of things from that money. And then he said, well done. What he did is he had to double the money he gave them. The one who had four, he, he had to give, to give him eight. The one who had two, he gave him four. And, and the other one who had one pound, he didn't give him. He didn't give him anything because he didn't do the job. He was just lazy. He, he didn't use the money he had so that he can do a job, or make life, or, or make a living. Instead, he he had to hide it under the soil, waiting for the man to come back. So this is not the right way we're supposed to live, waiting for Jesus. We're supposed to wait for Jesus using the talent and and the gift he has given us so that we, we can be useful to the society, to our families, to our friends, to our neighbors. So we use our gifts and our talent so we can work for the kingdom of God. When Jesus returns, he will reward us because of what we have been doing in this world, uh, serving him and making the world better. Now, Conclusion now, uh, the fruit of work well done, this is found in Matthew 25, verse 30 to 46. The picture here, this is Jesus. He says on this right side, on the right side, well done, you faithful servant. On the left side is showing, depart from me, you evildoer. Let's say that the person who kept the one pound under the soil and the, the, the boasting man who didn't care about that homeless, he said, depart from me, you evildoer. And the well done servant is the man who washed his friend's feet. Are the people who used the money and doubled the money and they used it properly. So these are the people who did well. And Jesus said, well done, faithful servant. Let us do this as well as we wait for Jesus. So every servant must be faithful. This man here is just wondering, how do I prepare so that I can go? I can go to heaven when Jesus returns. Now, every servant must be faithful to God. 1 John chapter 5, 11 to 12, halfway. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son, Jesus Christ. So we have to use the word of God to know what to do and how to live this life as we wait for the Lord's return. How do I prepare for his return? Every servant 
must live out Jesus' teaching. Let's see in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So these are the words we can learn from in order to live prepared and wait for the return of Jesus Christ who will come back to us. Every servant must live every day as if it is the day of Jesus' return. It's like the saying that we live every day as if this is the day, this is our last day of our lives. So we get ready every moment. Wait patiently for the Lord's return. James chapter five, from seven to eight. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer wait for the Lord's return. Pardon. See how the farmer wait for the land to yield its variable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. You must always consider Jesus' words where you are waiting for his return. This picture here is Jesus Christ. His word is saying, watch, be ready for the son of man will come at an hour that you do not know, what that you do not expect. And this one is in Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Let us pray. My Lord and my God, we thank you that we have hope that you are going to return. We wait patiently for your return. And Father, let us learn to use your word as we apply our everyday life. Your word giving us the courage and hope to hold on so that we, we can be ready for your return. Help us to always be encouraged that you will come and take us home, having passion that when you come, God, we will go home with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.